Okay, we started in the last module by reminding you the how we defined the adjoint operator for the matrices. Okay, and uh, we then proceeded to define for the differential operators an adjoint operator, but in uh, involving a rather complicated looking in sort of equation which we call as the generalized uh, Green's identity. But in that sort of equation, uh, mind you, uh, you can start seeing some familiarity that the first term was an integral over the differential operator acting on a function minus in the second term, it was complex conjugate of the adjoint operator acting on yet another function. Okay. So, that sort of uh, this was the thing and the difference of that was not 0, it was equal to something which was called as a surface term or a boundary term. So, now we would uh, sort of uh, like to understand that if by some means this boundary term can be uh, you know gotten rid of that is if it can be made to vanish then life would become much simpler and in fact it would then we, we would be able to actually show that the generalized Green's identity becomes what is called the Green's identity which is exactly identical to what you have learned from the you know formal operator notations the definition of the adjoint. So, it will become similar to that. So, just to follow those steps let us begin by reminding you what was our surface term like. So, the surface term was surface term in the generalized Green's identity was some q u v bar at x is equal to b minus q of some u v bar at x is equal to a and you have to remember that this q function it is a bilinear form of u v bar and it is u prime v, v bar prime which is a x uh, u v bar plus b x uh, u v bar prime plus c x u prime v bar plus d x u prime v bar prime and this uh, you understand this uh, has to be evaluated at the two boundaries a and b right. So, this we will write like this b and a ok. So, now when can we question is that can we make this equal to 0 and when can we do that. Now, we before I tell you the general statement that when it can be done I mean that is a general result we will not go through the explicit uh, you know working out or uh, we will skip the full proof here. But before I go to the general statement, I would like to demonstrate to you a, sim a sub sort of uh, simpler subclass of uh, such a example, where uh, you can explicitly see why such a claim is being made that what is the condition for this to be 0. So, I will as an example choose, so choose as an example boundary condition. So, now you see in order for this to be 0, you have to specify what is the value of u, what is the value of v at a and b, you have to tell me what is the value of u prime at a and b and what is the value of v prime at u and a and b. So, that is why the whole notion is coming of boundary conditions because the value of u and u prime v and v prime at the boundaries are nothing but the boundary conditions that you have to specify. Okay. So, hence boundary, so value problem and boundary conditions. So, boundary conditions suppose and this is an example only not the most general thing that suppose boundary conditions are u of b I choose to be 0 and u prime of a I choose to be 0. Okay. This is I will call this as an equation 1 for my special case, this is an example case. So, if I put these here, let us see what happens. 
so q of u v bar at b and a this is the shorthand of this and what do you see here you see the moment you put u b is equal to 0 this term and this term will vanish for the upper limit ok when you put this for the lower limit this term and this term will vanish so I will just straight away write then this will be C B V bar B plus D B V prime bar uh, B and this will be multiplied by here. So, here these two at the B has gone to 0. So, this is V bar B and there will be a U prime B ok and that U prime B is also multiplying here. So, these two terms survive these two have gone away. On the other hand for the lower limit Okay. So, thus this term survives. Okay, good. So, this is what we have. But now, mind you, we have claimed this is 0, this is 0, but this is not equal to 0 and this is not equal to 0. And mind you, not only they are not equal to 0, you can fix it to be anything arbitrary and you are interested in the value that this is equal to 0. Is it ever possible? I can choose this anything, I can choose this anything, I am claiming this is equal to 0. This can only happen if this is equal to 0 and this is equal to 0. Okay. So, I am forced to conclude that and you can remove the complex conjugation here. So, you can put a C bar B instead of the bar from here, you can you take a complex con this is equal to 0 means its complex conjugate is also 0. So, V B plus d b v prime b that is equal to 0 and a a this plus b a bar v prime a is equal to 0. Okay. So, now observe I started with these boundary conditions over u and I landed up getting a boundary condition over the v function, this I will call as equation 2, this pair of equations I call as equation 2. So, what do you observe that corresponding to a boundary condition, there are a pair of boundary conditions on the v function, these are going to be called as the adjoint boundary conditions. Okay. So, that is the most important thing, but look at the form of this. This is linear in u and u prime, this is also linear in v and v prime. Okay. So, in general such linear boundary conditions on the u and the v functions are called homogeneous boundary conditions. Boundary conditions. this word homogeneous boundary conditions merely refer to the fact that the u v u prime v prime are linearly related at the boundaries boundaries a and b ok. Okay, so, then, then we see that this q can be made to 0. Now, you may say this was a very special choice. I did not really put a fully linear form and did not show you a fully linear form for v comes out that it may be left as an exercise for you to do, but I will just write down what is the claim because it is pretty straightforward, only a lengthy calculation and I am not going to get into that. So, this is the general result. result 
proofs proof is skipped here if ux function satisfies certain boundary conditions which i write as satisfies b1 u and b2 u is equal to 0 b1 u b2 u is equal to 0 but b1 b2 are what some i can expand them out and write that is alpha 1 u a plus beta 1 u prime a plus gamma 1 u b plus delta 1 u prime b okay that is suppose equal to 0 now you can compare this with this see this is the special case in which you might say alpha 1 was 0 beta 1 was 0 delta 1 was 0 gamma 1 was 1 i mean gamma 1 you can keep anything but only this term was surviving that was equal to 0 this is my b1 boundary condition in this example what is my b2 boundary condition b2 similarly you can write with other coefficients and this time you will say that u prime a that was the only thing that was equal to 0 means alpha 2 gamma 2 delta 2 they were 0 that is my b2 so this is b1 and this is b2 for this example but in general you can have a uh, such a b1 and b2 and then by assuming this homogeneous homogeneous boundary conditions the claim is that that is the general result is that then q of u v bar prime at a and b is equal to 0 if v if similar linear forms that is some b3 v function is equal to 0 and b4 v function is equal to 0 where it is the same form with u replaced by v ok. So, some alpha 3 u in place of u you will have a v a plus beta 3 instead of u prime you will have v prime a plus gamma 3 v b plus delta 3 v prime b ok and similarly similarly with an alpha 4 beta 4 gamma 4 delta 4 you are going to have these now if you want to understand what this is compare this b3 with this in the specific example you can see for yourself there is a constant multiplying vb and there is a constant multiplying vb prime constant multiplying vb prime constant multiplying vb and rest of everything is zero so this is one of the b3 and the this is the b4 okay for that specific example but the general claim is that always for this if such a thing you can always find then this can be made to zero and these are called adjoint boundary conditions adjoint homogeneous adjoint genius boundary conditions but now observe that because the u function satisfy a set of a pair of boundary conditions they will actually correspond to vectors in a particular space ux functions represent vectors like u which belong to a function space u this is a particular function space the vx functions they satisfy yet another pair of boundary conditions which are not the same they represent vectors v which belong to v which is yet another function space
okay and we are claiming this is the main result that the boundary term has now vanished and if boundary term has vanished then what is the result that you are then claiming that from the generalized greens identity we are led to then because of this you are led to that integral a to b dx w okay v prime v bar l x u is equal to a to b dx w u l x dagger on v complex conjugation that is equal because now the boundary term has vanished. So, the generalized Green's identity now becomes this identity which has a name and that is what is the title I was telling which is Green's identity. Very important. We so, basically by choice of suitable boundary conditions I have gotten rid of the boundary term or the surface term. So, surface term term equal to 0 now. That is the main construction by construction of the boundary conditions. We have made sure this term goes to 0 and this is what we are left with. Now, if you stare at these, if you for uh, think of these as these integrals being something to do with, you know, now go back to the, uh, to the matrix algebra, whatever we had, can we make it look like something that we knew about the operators? And that is what I am now going to show you. This is exactly identical to what you knew as the definition of adjoint from matrix algebra. So, for that, we cannot work with LX type of operators. Let us try to define something which is an abstract operator L hat. That is, if there exists an abstract operator L hat uh, such that L hat acting on the vectors belonging to the space U. If I get a new vector and then I take an inner product with that of the of this bra sort of uh, bra x, then of course let us say that the meaning of this is Lx ux, where this relationship is true only for the vectors u which belong to the u space. Similarly, if another abstract operator L hat dagger exists, which satisfies a similar relation, but now with respect to the vectors v and the functions vx belonging to another function space. Only for v belonging to this function space, then let us try to understand what is the difference of this and the complex conjugate of this? Not this. This is what we have defined as the x uh, in the x basis. So, now let us do a more general thing which is that v l hat u minus u l dagger v complex conjugation. Now, this expression do you recall? This is, if these are equal, this is the definition of the adjoint that we had in the matrix algebra. So, we want to see what this is now in the, in this whole differential operator formalism. So, bef so observe, this is what I want to evaluate. Now, to evaluate this, I will just do one thing, incorporate in these two places, two identity operators, okay. You can always instead of L hat write identity operator and L hat. Minus U E hat L dagger V this. And we have learnt recall 
that we began our discussion of function spaces by defining how in a continuous index basis we can def we can write our identity operator that we know recall identity operator e hat can be written as a to b dx wx this was our definition we or rather the redefinition of how to write the identity operator in a complex in a sort of continuous index basis related to the function spaces. So, we will just incorporate that here and we will use these two definitions that are written here and very simply we see that we get the Green's identity. So, uh, what is this? So, this will be written as a to b v x and x l hat see this e hat has now been written like this. So, this x you get an inner product with v from this side and with uh, this x you get an inner product on l hat u l hat u minus integral a to b and this uh, there is a dx of course there is a dx u x and there is a complex conjugation on top which we should not forget and then there is a x l dagger v and then there is a complex conjugation on top. So, this is all you have. I have just rewritten this in place of the e just this and now you can just compare with this and you can write a to b dx w v bar. See this object is nothing but complex conjugate of v bar x and this is l x u x you know this is by this definition minus a to b d x. So, here there will be a w. So, let us uh, write this there is a w x minus there is a w x always multiplying. So, that w is here and this is u bar bar that is u of x and this is l x dagger v x this ok. But now compare this with this. This is exactly this minus this and that is what that is equal to 0. But this is this is equal to 0 is what we call as the Green's identity right. So, what did we learn from this? Green's identity is nothing but exactly telling that this is equal to 0 or in other words the relation v l hat u is equal to u l dagger v complex conjugation this relation is equivalent to to Green's identity that we had been writing ok. So, that is reassuring because you can say that we define that joint operator through the Green's identity, but that is equivalent to telling that you define that joint operator through this relation. But mind you why did we have to go through so much you know grind because unlike our matrix sort of finite dimensional uh, operators here we had to be very careful in order to get these that what were the boundary conditions ok. And the boundary conditions are homogeneous then only such a relation can be written. So, it is very very non trivial do not just simply think that these two are so very equivalent to write these we had to go through lots of assumptions and that is what we have done carefully ok. Just to remind you that these is equivalent provided but u x and v x satisfies special boundary conditions, special boundary conditions, conditions one of them is this boundary condition the other is this boundary condition and they belong to two different 
vectors I mean two different vector spaces or two different function spaces and then only you can go ahead and define the meaning of this adjoint operator properly. Thank you.